Okay, so now that we've talked about the shipyards, let's talk about research. So researching is one of the core elements of Aurora. It is something you're going to be coming back to all the damn time. It is critical to gameplay. It's very, very important. So research is in two halves. You've got the technologies themselves in a couple of different categories and you have scientists who do the actual research now at the start of the game you roll up a couple the game rolls up a couple of random scientists for you um, each scientist has a specialization a bonus and a lab capacity the specialization and the bonus are important. The max labs are less important. Max labs is fairly simple. It's just how many laboratories they are capable of controlling. So, for example, we have eight labs at the moment. Helena Cabieri can handle 25, so she can just grab all eight labs and just run with them. Whereas Nereus Galenor can only handle five. So he can take five, but the other three are going to have to go somewhere else. Um, that means that it's basically a hard limit to how many research points this scientist can actually generate because you can only get five labs worth of actual production out of it. So, for example, Heracles Argos here now uh, is in the same specialization as Nereus Galenor, construction and production. But even though he has a 5% smaller bonus, he can handle twice the labs. So if we had 10 labs... Um, that we could allocate in the construction and production, we would want Heracles to be actually in charge because even though his bonus is less, he can handle all 10 labs. But because we only have eight, then it might be worth doing some math to see who will actually give us more research points. Um, so that's information there. The specialization is where it gets very, very important. So... Why do we want to use Nerinus instead of Helena? Because if the specialization matches the category of the technology that we are researching, the bonus is multiplied by four. So, Transutonian technology, Helena Kaberi, she's energy weapons, not construction. If we go and give her that project, the modifier is 15%. So the bonus modifier is 1.15. So we only get 1,840 with our eight labs. If we go ahead and give it to Heracles Argos, even though his bonus is only 10% instead of 15, it gets multiplied by four because it lines up with the field. So he generates 2,240 research points. This is very, very important. You need, you want to make sure that your specialization lines up. Now, problem is, you might not have a scientist with the correct specialization. That sucks. I know. We have a couple of categories. Uh, for example, we do not have a logistics scientist. We have a, we got two construction, we got a power, we got a ground combat, we got a defensive systems, we got missiles, kinetics, we got an anti weapon scientist. We don't have a logistics guy. We don't. We just don't. Um, over time, we might get one, but right now, we don't. So if we want to go and research something logistics, like if we want a large cargo hold or a large fuel storage, we can still give that project to someone else. But at that point, you just want whoever's going to give you the highest bonus. The bonus doesn't matter. The max labs, as long as it's above how many labs you have, doesn't matter. You just need to get the highest bonus because you're shit out of luck until you get a better, until you get a logistic guy. But that's an edge case. Eventually, you're going to have enough scientists and you're going to have somebody in every category. So eventually, it's not going to be an issue. But at the very beginning, you're going to have the problem where you're just not going to have a scientist in the correct field. It sucks, but them's the brakes. 
uh, this button, this tick box here will filter out to the scientists that, so that only match the correct category. So once you have like 50 scientists, you're going to want to use this tick box to make sure that you don't accidentally allocate it to the wrong scientist. So um, early on, it doesn't matter, but eventually you're going to want, you're really going to need to use this tick box. Um, this is how many labs you're allocating. The default is the maximum capacity that the scientist can work on out of how many you have. So we don't have any, so it's zero. If we go ahead and remove this guy and click on him again, you can see that it's eight. So even though he can handle 10, we only have eight, so that's how many we have. But we could drop this down to four if it's not something important, and then he's only gonna get four labs. So uh, that way you can give him a set amount of labs instead of literally all that you have that he can handle. Um, you also can use the add and remove lab option button here that will automatically add and remove labs. You can't add more than you have, and you can't remove the last lab. So each scientist has to have at least one lab that he's working on uh, as part of the project. So keep that in mind. And you can see here that the annual research rate and the completion date changes as they go. You can pause a project, but there's really very little reason to do so. Now, one very important thing to keep in mind, uh, each research point generated consumes one wealth. So to generate a research point, it costs wealth. So, but, but it does not cost 2,240 annual wealth to research because it's only the base research points generated by the lab, them, lab itself that actually costs wealth. The bonus research points generated by the scientists themselves are free. They do not cost any additional wealth. So that is why the, the uh, research bonus is just that much more important. So we are getting 40% free research points out of this scientist, whereas we would get a lot less. So it's not just that it, that it gets out there and that it gets it done faster, but it gets it done cheaper as well. That is why the research bonus is so critically important and why you always want the special specialization to line up with the field of the research project. Um, you also get queuing as well. So we'll talk about queuing uh, here. Uh, so for example, uh, research points. Say for example, he generates 50 research points a day and the research project is only gonna cost 20. If he doesn't have anything queued, he's going to generate those 20 points and the remaining 30 points is going to disappear into the ether. That is why you want to do queuing. Every scientist working on a project should have something queued behind it. So we can go ahead and add this to queue. And you can see here, wealth generation assigned to Heracles, and he's going to be uh, assigned to that. This, even if you don't give a crap, about the next project. You want to have something there because when he finishes, any overflow research points generated during that production cycle that are not allocated to finish off whatever he's working on will get allocated to the next project. This does not happen if it's not queued. If they finish and they don't have a queued project, any overflow is lost, which is why you always want to have something queued even if you don't particularly want it there, right? You always want to have something queued on the back of every scientist working on a project, always. Even if you don't care about what, about what's actually in a queue, you always want to have something there. Otherwise, you're just wasting research points. Otherwise, just wasting research points. So, yeah, uh, always have something queued. Um, over here, you have the completed toggle which will give you a list of all technologies and projects that have been completed. Um, obviously, at conventional, you're not going to have anything that's been completed. There's a couple of base texts that the game keeps track of, um, but they're not they're they're invisible technologies. Um, they're only important for game 
functionality. Um, so right now, because they're not listed, you're not going to see it. Uh, once we complete this one, then you'll see that in the um, you'll see it in the completed. Most of the time, you're probably not going to need completed, but available is fine here. Um, you can also remove technologies out of completed. Um, there are very few reasons that you would ever want to do this, but you can remove completed technologies from um, racial knowledge. Um, usually, you'd only ever want to do this to things like component technologies. Like you can delete the technology so that you forget a component. If it's if, if you have like a laser cannon from fifty years ago that you're never going to use again because it's old and shit, you can do that to components like that. Or for example, if you have like two copies of the same component, you can get rid of one of them. Or if you have an alien component that you've picked up. That's added its technology to, uh, that added itself that you're never going to use because you think it's crap. You can delete that. You can remove that technology from the known technologies list. So there are reasons why you would do this, but they are relatively rare.